Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I want to show you how to hand knit one of these really lovely mitered squares. They are a great beginner project. They're perfect for when you've just got the hang of maintaining your tension when you're knitting and you only need to learn two decrease types to be able to knit one of these. They're great for stash busting because you can join as you go when you're knitting them when you add more squares on. And if you don't want to join as you go, you can sew them together really easy and they are knit so that you have one continuous row of stitches and you decrease all the way down to make it into a square so you get a perfect square every time you don't have to worry about tension um, counting rows and making sure that you're doing enough rows because you decrease in such a way that you end up with a perfect square every time so for this tutorial you're going to need some knitting needles uh, straight needles, cable needles, use whichever ones you prefer. I like to use circular cable needles, some embroidery scissors, yarn in the colour of your choice and if you want to, a stitch marker. This isn't obligatory, it just means that you're having to count less stitches because you mark the midway point to where your decreases are going to be. So without further ado, let's get cracking. When you're making one of these squares, you want to cast on twice as many stitches as your square is wide. So this square here, I cast on 60 stitches and each side is 30 stitches wide. You can cast on as many or as few stitches as you want, as long as your number is divisible by two. So you must cast on an even number of stitches. Otherwise, this will not work because you need an even number of stitches to be able to get um, an equal number of stitches on each side of the decrease and to do the two decreases that you want. So, as I said, this is uh, 60 stitches, but for this tutorial, I'm going to make a smaller square. So I'm going to cast on 40 stitches. So you can use whichever cast on method you prefer. I'm going to use the long tail cast on because for, for me, for these squares, it's my preferred cast on method. Don't forget that your slip knot that you make counts as your first stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and cast on 40 stitches. So this is stitch 40, now 40 lovely stitches cast on and then what you want to do is you want to turn your work and then we're going to start working the two row repeat that will make up the rest of the square. So you want to grab your stitch marker and to start off with we're going to knit 20 stitches so we're going to knit half of our row of 40 so if you're doing more or less you would need to knit half of the stitches that you've cast on. That's 20 and then if you want to you can pop your stitch marker here this will help to mark the halfway point so that you know when to do your decreases uh, it's not obligatory you can count stitches if you prefer but you can just pop a marker on your work there and then carry on and knit the, uh, the final 20 stitches to the end of your row So there we have our first row, we've knit all the way across. This side here is our wrong side and you can always tell when you are going to knit 
a whole row across because when you start your row the tail from your long tail cast on will be at that end so for our next repeat so the second row of our two row repeat you want to turn your work again and you want to knit until two stitches before the end of your marker so if you're counting you would know take two off of your halfway point so in my case that would be 18 so i would knit 18 stitches or this is why we use a stitch marker for easy sight that we just want to knit until we have two stitches left before this stitch marker So here we have two stitches before the end of the marker and we want to knit these two together and that is as simple as it sounds. You take two stitches instead of one and you knit them both together. And that turns two stitches into one and is the start of our decrease. There. Then you want to pop your marker over from your left needle to your right needle and then we want to work the second of our two decreases and the second of the two decreases that we're going to work instead of doing a knit two together we're going to do a slip slip knit so you want to pick up your stitches if you're going to knit it slide it over onto your right hand needle and then pick up the next stitch Again, as if you're going to knit it, knit it, so you're going into the front of the stitch, you're not coming in from behind, you're coming in from the front. You want to also pop that on your right hand needle. And the way I find easiest is to then pop my left needle back into those two stitches, pick up my yarn from behind and pull it through both stitches. And then you've done your slip slip knit. The reason we'd work two different types of decreases is the knit two together leans right and the knit slip slip knit leans left. So they make the correct direction of lean for the direction of the mitre. And you see, so our knit two togethers are this side, so they move they lean in the direction of these rows, and our slip slip knits are this side, and they lean in the direction of these rows here. So it just makes it look a lot neater. So once you've worked those two decreases, easy peasy, you just want to knit all the way to the end of the row. There we go. And it's these two rows that form the basis of the whole square. So your wrong side rows or your odd numbers rows, you knit all the way across. You don't do any decreases, you knit all the way across. And then on your even numbered rows, you knit to two stitches from the marker. You do your knit two together and your slip slip knit at your centre point and then you knit all the way to the end. So I'll show you again. We're going to turn our work. And this is what I meant about the tail, that you can see here that here where we cast on, this tail is at the beginning of the row with us. So we know from looking at this tail that we need to knit all the way to the end of the row. This is not a decrease row because we have our tail. If you've used a different cast on method, um, if you've used the knit cast on, then it will be the opposite way around. But if you've used a long tail cast on like me, then you will have your tail dangling at the beginning of your odd numbers rows. So it's quite easy to see that you just need to knit all the way across. When you get to the stitch marker, you just lift it over from one needle to the next because there's no decreases on this row and then carry on knitting all the way to the end.
turn your work. And now we're on a decrease row, you can tell because we don't have our cast on tail at the beginning with us. So we know that this is one of the rows that we need to work a decrease. So again, you want to knit to two stitches before your stitch marker. We are nearly two stitches before the end of the stitch marker. And then again, we want to knit these two stitches together. So we're going to pop our needle into both of the stitches. Sometimes it helps to just pull up your right hand needle a little bit so you get a little bit more room in your loops. Pick up your loop and knit through both those stitches. Pop your stitch marker onto the right hand needle. And then we are going to slip slip knit so go into the stitch as if you're just going to knit it but pop it over onto the next stitch needle again lift it as if you're going to knit it and lift it from your left needle to your right needle pop your left hand needle back into both stitches and then use your right hand needle to pull the loop through both stitches and you should have decreased two stitches into one and you can see there if i show you that it is leaning that way so it's going to go in the direction that our row is heading off as we are making that mitre and then again just knit all the way to the end of the row and you want to repeat these two rows until you have four stitches left on your needle so i am going to go away i'm going to knit the rest of this square i will join you back when we have four stitches left you can pause this video if you want um, and I will meet you back when we've got four stitches left on our needles. So I've just worked my last decrease row, taking me from six stitches to four stitches. So once you've got to that, turn your work once more. and knit all the way across. So this is an odd numbered row. At this point, you can get rid of the stitch marker. We don't need that anymore. Turn your work and you'll see we're at a decrease row because we haven't got our cast on yarn here. This is still working the same um, two row repeat that we would be working through the whole square I've carried on and worked all the way down to the fewer stitches so for the last couple of rows there is a slight change this row is the same so you will do a knit two together straight away because you have no other stitches before the, the central knit two together it can be a bit tricky because it, the, obviously you're working straight from the beginning of the row there we go, so knit two together and then a slip slip knit. And that takes us down to two stitches. And then what I found the easiest way to do is, is to turn your work once more. And then rather than knitting the two stitches and casting off, I knit the two stitches together. like that so I end up with one stitch left on my needle and then I'm going to cut my working yarn leaving enough of a tail to sew my ends in and then I'm going to pull that working yarn through my last stitch and that creates a nice corner for your square so there we have one perfectly square knitted mitre square with a beautiful 45 degree mitre line going up. These are gorgeous. When you join different squares, you end up with one long diagonal row of decreases and they kind of seamlessly work together when you join them up together. And you can see as well that on the back, it still looks really pretty. So if you're making a blanket, you're not gonna have an ugly wrong side. The back still looks pretty too. 
So then all you're left to do is to sew in your ends and you have got a mitered square. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you again for another one soon. Take care. Bye.